Hello everyone, welcome to this course on XR Data Cloud Service Backup and Recovery. My name is Bal Sarma, I am part of Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Product Management Team. Before we get into this course, uh, this is our safe harbor statement and I will take a pause here so that you can read it. So at the end of this training, you should have an understanding on how we configure backup as well as how to do recoveries on Exadata Cloud Service using the APIs provided by Oracle. You should be also able to understand the prerequisites before starting with backup configuration. You should be able to verify how to check for any existing backup configuration on the XRCS system before attempting to make any backup configuration changes. I am also going to briefly cover available tools and assistance for getting you started with the configuration. You should be able to create a backup configuration file, install the same for any database you want backup to be configured. You should be able to understand how to do on-demand backups as well as scheduled backup and how they work, how to customize them and how to take a backup and list backups or do restore uh, from the backups you have already taken. You should be able to understand basic troubleshooting in case if backups have any issues. And at the end, I will take you to a demo environment and I will show you the same concepts like what we are going to discuss in uh, this particular session. So Exadata supports uh, backup of a database, uh, basically two options. So one is like in the object storage bucket that is known as cloud backup. And the other option is a local backup, which is getting done on the recovery area, which we configure with the uh, Exadata Cloud Service provisioning. So you need to have a backup configuration file, which will specify the backup destination and when that backup is going to run, how long those backups are going to be written. And if the backup destination is object storage, the file also contains the credentials to access that particular service. And what I mean by credentials is like the user who has access to your object storage bucket and uh, then like it will be associated with a URL and uh, user credential uh, with a auth token as the password. So as the next step, you are going to associate the backup configuration file with a database and the database will be backed up as scheduled or you can also create an uh, on-demand backup in case you need. So one of the note here is you must update the cloud specific tooling on all the compute nodes in the Exadata database system before you perform the backup restore procedures. And there are various ways to uh, update the cloud tooling. Uh, you can use either dbus CLI uh, command. So dbus CLI patch tools list will list you all the available uh, tooling on your system. And then like you have an option to update it to the latest by using apply uh, clause within Diva CLI or it depends. So we have uh, several other uh, ways also to update this tooling. So you can uh, basically query from your uh, uh, system that which a specific version of uh, Diva tool you have. And then like you can use the XRDBC patch SM command uh, to perform the activity. So these things are uh, mentioned in this uh, uh, link on updating an Exadata database system. So coming to uh, the prerequisites of uh, backup and restore. So Exadata database system requires access to the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Object Storage Service. And Oracle also recommends to use a service gateway with the VCN to enable this access. And this is what like we have briefly discussed when uh, we were looking at Exadata Cloud Service Overview, uh, where I created a service gateway and uh, associated the same uh, with the uh, backup configuration means uh, basically the uh, routing rule to your object storage uh, bucket uh, was configured as part of uh, provisioning. So you need to have an object storage bucket which will be used as your backup destination. You can do this or create a, a object storage uh, object storage bucket using either console or the using the object storage API. Another thing you have to do is to create an auth token. Uh, on your Oracle Cloud infrastructure. Again, you can use either console or the IAM API to generate this particular password. You need to have the username, uh, which will be specified in backup configuration file, and it must have the tenancy level access to object storage. Uh, 
So you need to have a policy which will allow you to access uh, the object storage bucket within your tenancy. And policies can be uh, written uh, by your administrator. One of the example is like allow group group name to read bucket in a compartment with your compartment name. So it just makes your before attempting this that you have uh, required a privilege or like access to your object storage bucket uh, because you are going to provide those credentials in your backup configuration. So for those like who doesn't uh, uh, have understanding on how to create this, so I have captured few of the screenshots and uh, before you configure your backup, uh, you have to make your subnet for backup has is associated with a route through service gateway and that is going to facilitate access to your object storage and the backup subnet xrcs uses a separate backup subnet which could be on a private subnet uh, and one of the example you can check in your environment like what is your backup subnet within your xrcs system and it is associated with a routing table in my case it is priv and uh, i have default dscp options here and there are certain security lists so uh, this is going to provide the access to my uh, object storage bucket through service gateway and service gateway creation is easy like we have seen it in XRCS provisioning um, part like uh, in the first course on XR Data Cloud Service Overview. So you, you, you can validate the same like in your XRCS environment that you need to have a service gateway and uh, the routing rule should be allowing you access to um, uh, reaching out to object storage bucket. So in my case, like if you see your OCI IAD object storage and it is target type is service gateway. So that confirms that I have uh, the connectivity already established through uh, service gateway in my Oracle Cloud infrastructure. The another thing like uh, we discussed that you need to have a auth token for your uh, object storage bucket. So for those like who are new to OCI, uh, you can log into your console and go under users. And uh, for your particular user, you will have a auth token on your left hand side uh, on the console. So create, select that one, and it provides you an option to generate an auth token. So you see here there is a button generate token. Uh, right now I have no auth tokens within uh, uh, my console. So I'm going to create our token for user balsarma at oracle.com. So click on generate token and uh, you can specify a description for it, like why you want this and for what purpose it is going to be used and it will generate a random token for you. So you need to copy this particular value and keep it in a safe place because uh, it will not display the same token uh, next time uh, when you want to use it. So once the prerequisites are uh, done, uh, this slide talks about what are different assistants and tools available for backup. And uh, if you uh, see here, like we have a directory called as var opt oracle on each of the XRCS DOM use. And inside that var opt oracle, you have backup API. And backup API is the one like which takes the heavy duty, it takes care of like all of your backup configuration listing and uh, different functionality of uh, backup and restore. You have like few more directories within uh, where OPT Oracle, one is related to OCDs, uh, that's uh, again an uh, assistant, like we will see the usage of that. The OSS is mainly dealing with your object storage. And uh, how we take backups are like uh, two things. One is automatic jobs via cron tab and on demand on a VM. Right, so once you will configure your backup configuration for a database, these things will be kicked in. So automatically the backup will be uh, executed and uh, it, it will be a level zero backup or uh, incremental backup, uh, depending on the backup policy in place. And you have always an opportunity to invoke a backup on demand and uh, that backup can use any kind of tag or like uh, you can keep it for maybe uh, longer term uh, retention policy or like keep with option of forever so uh, depending on the scenario like you have uh, abilities to use these tools and uh, configure your backups so to get it started uh, as i said in the beginning like we need to create a backup configuration file and the backup configuration has to be done from first compute node of xr data cloud service 
so this is very important like all the backup configuration has to be done from the first compute node of XRCS and you can always determine the first node by logging as grid user you can specify OLS nodes hyphen n so that returns you uh, how many nodes you have in the cluster and uh, based on their names like you would be able to identify uh, this is going to be my first compute node so once you have identified your first compute node SSH to that particular node and for doing SSH you will be using uh, user as OPC and uh, OPC user has sudo privilege so it can go to grid or it can do a sudo to oracle or sudo to root right so once you log into your first compute node just uh, log in as root uh, from there using sudo and then you have to create a new backup configuration file uh, you can create this file anywhere in the temp directory or on the uh, oracle home or any uh, any place which you access by uh, root uh, so in my example i'm going to create this file under var opt oracle ocd assistant backup and uh, that will be used for scheduling backup of, uh, on both the disk as well as object storage so you if you are going to store the backup on a uh, disk or not that is a design consideration you might have already factored during provisioning of xrcs system because based on your selection if you want to have a local backup the recovery area is going to uh, have enough storage uh, which will satisfy the uh, backup or uh, archive logs or those kind of uh, things in place so once you create this file uh, we will save the file we will set the permission and then like we will be going ahead with uh, uh, installing that one that configuration for the database so in this example uh, i'm navigating to var opt oracle ocd assistant backup i create a backup.cfg file it, this particular file could be empty by default so you can take a look at like when you log in logging to your compute node that if this file should be there most likely but it will not have any record in it right so you can enter the uh, uh, values and uh, i have taken an example like i have logged into uh, root uh, on my system this is my first compute node and uh, the content of backup.cfg is like backup configuration files equals to yes backup underscore disk is yes backup disk recovery window backup oss so uh, for getting details on these parameters like what exactly they mean right like backup daily time or backup OSS recovery window it is mostly like self-explanatory but uh, uh, in uh, necessity we are talking about both kind of backup so it's a disk backup also as well as backup OSS which is nothing but the object storage back backup the another thing uh, uh, if you uh, note here is like I have backup OSS URL right and this is the url of my object storage uh, where this ociob enablement is my tenancy like identity domain and bal xd bucket is the bucket which i have created for holding the backup pieces right so you will have your own uh, oss url that you can find out uh, in your tenancy and uh, then you need to have the oss user so in my case like this is my user id which has access to uh, this particular uh, uh, bucket in my tenancy. And then uh, you have already created a auth token. And in my case, OSS password, this is nothing but the auth token for your object storage bucket. So these are related to your cloud backup, these three parameters basically. And uh, uh, also the fourth one backup OSS, I want a cloud backup also in my environment then once you have like these details in place uh, put it there in this file and uh, you can also specify backup daily time uh, in this example i have given five o'clock right so i just wanted to test like how they work but uh, based on your maintenance window you are going to change this particular time so make it the time window you want then backup cron entry so what it does is like you will set a cron entry also uh, which will automate your day-to-day -day backup so i have selected it as yes so with these parameters like you have specified the minimum values which uh, is needed for your backup configuration means i want backups on my recovery area as well as on my cloud uh, object storage and then you need to set permission as 600 to this backup 
uh, change the ownership of this to root yeah it is not required if you are already logged in and uh, creating it uh, from root user so with that like backup configuration is uh, file is created and uh, we'll proceed to look at the second step which is installing backup configuration so just uh, a little concept on this so you have to use the command like backup cfg uh, specified with like the configuration file you have created and then the database name and you can have one or more databases on your xrcs environment so what this command is doing here is like uh, it will make the backup configuration which we have already created effective for the database which we supply here so database name can be uh, any database name for which you don't have backup configuration already done so this is the method of setting it or installing it you can say so once backup is scheduled via cron it will be also available or you can uh, open up etc cron tab and it should show you that uh, there are a few entries which are created for uh, getting this backup done so when the schedule backup runs uh, you would be able to also uh, check the progress of that one and then like we will be using a uh, var opt oracle backup api and uh, within this one we have backup underscore api with backup underscore status uh, command will show you the progress of your uh, backup so there are a few uh, uh, options we discussed like while configuring this uh, backup configuration file and uh, this particular link has the details on uh, all those parameters so you can take a look at it uh, one of the note is like if you have used object storage as a backup destination you can display the backup files in your bucket in the console or on the storage page by selecting object storage so obviously like you have access to your oci console and you would be able to log in and uh, you can go to navigate to object storage page and then you would be able to see the um, bucket which you already created earlier and inside the bucket you would be able to list all the objects uh, as part of the backup uh, which is uh, taken like daily uh, level 0 or level 1. The another thing is like a backup configuration can contain the credentials to access the object storage bucket and that is the reason you might want to remove the file once you have successfully configured your backup. right? Okay, so with that concept, like now we already have a configuration file created and uh, we have the important parameters uh, for our uh, uh, cloud backup as well as local backup. So now it is time to make that uh, backup uh, effective, right? And for doing that one, uh, we call it installing the backup configuration. And uh, the step is like you will navigate to um, your directory or like uh, it has to be done from the root user again so you will be executing a backup api set config command and uh, under config file like you have to provide the backup cfg which you have you have already created right and then uh, you need to uh, specify the database name for which you are going to make this backup configuration effective so in my case the database name is bms prod and i'm going to set this backup on uh, this database so once you execute this command, uh, it will provide you a bit of uh, logging here. So you can set see that like DBAS backup API version and XN is set config and there is a log file associated with that. So this log file can be tracked uh, later to see what's going on behind the scene. So configuration file used for installing the backup is uh, listed out here. And then it will validate all the parameters if everything is fine the process will get started so you will see a pid which can be again used for uh, tracking it like you can use always a ps ef grep pid and you'll be able to track what's going on with uh, this particular command so just for backup activity log i have given a tail of uh, like this uh, backup api.log which i received from the command execution and uh, in this one uh, you can clearly see that like uh, I have given a backup uh, to be started at five o'clock, right? So just for testing purpose, like this is not the complete output of the command, 
I have just uh, provided you like what was going on with uh, that command. So it says that like backup configuration has just started running on my node, uh, first node of XRCS. And then like by default, it has given a tag to that particular backup and backup has succeeded here at uh, this one. So in that command, like I configured the backup and also I wanted to test uh, that backup should happen so that uh, uh, this is what the command is showing. So once the backup is done, it, it is also given a tag. And then uh, what it has done is it has started the archive log backup here, right? So by OPT, uh, assistant backup, O backup, DB name, archive log, and the UID. So even it shows the archive log backup is completed for uh, my uh, database. So this is the step to install the backup configurations uh, uh, here. Another thing, like even before attempting this uh, backup configuration, like you might be interested in knowing if there is already a backup set for the database, right? So how you be able to um, know that one? So backup API provides backup check config command, right, as an argument, and you can specify with any database name you want to check like whether backup is uh, there or not. So in this example, I have logged in to root user and then I'm uh, specifying this backup API with backup chk cfg uh, uh, argument uh, passing the database name in it, right? So uh, the output of that one is like it has checked, like it is again creating a backup API dot log and uh, o backup, which is showing that valid is in open state. So it is a security valid, right? So all of the backups on um, uh, either on OCI object storage or local backups, they are all in, uh, encrypted. So uh, whether you configure like backup on both or like just on cloud or on local, it is going to be encrypted all the time. And that's why like you see the wallet here, the, uh, there is a security wallet which makes your uh, they are encrypted wallet. So it checks that Oracle database state is up and running and then only it would be able to uh, provide you these configuration details. Uh, the configuration files it says yes like there is a configuration file uh, also which is getting backed up uh, the most important is the type of the backup which in this case it shows disk oss so disk oss means local disk and oss it could be either disk it could be oss or disk oss so three values depending on uh, uh, like what kind of backup you have set right if you don't have any backup configured already this parameter will have no values in it so it will show you empty that clearly means like there is no backup configuration in place so moving next uh, so uh, now we have seen how to configure a backup means first we created the backup configuration file then we used the uh, set config command to make the backup effective or we installed the backup uh, once you have the backup configuration in place, uh, you want to definitely create a on-demand backup also, depending on the need. So you can use the backup API utility again to create an on-demand backup of a database. And for doing that one, like uh, you need to log into your compute node in the Exadata database system and log in as OPC and sudo to root, root user. Uh, you can then list the, let the backup follow either the current retention policy or you can create a long-term backups. Right. So what I mean is like back each database is having a backup configuration in place. Right. So if you want to use the same uh, backup configuration, you can go ahead and like run the command like backup start and it would be able to do that. But you can also create a long term backup which can have a different purpose. Right. So that persists until you delete it. Right. Other backups which are getting done will be deleted based on the uh, your retention policy. So if you want to create a backup that follows the current retention policy, you need to just specify backup API with backup start and the database name equals to database name tag. So this will uh, take a backup based on the current retention policy. In case like you want to create a long term backup, you will have to use a few more clause that is called a keep in this case. So it is the same API backup start hyphen hyphen keep and then you are going to specify the database name. So this backup, which is getting created by a uh, keep clause will be not deleted uh, 
based on the current uh, returns and policies. So this could be a monthly backup or maybe a quarterly backup or yearly backup you want to retain for some or other purpose. So uh, that's the reason like we have provided this option. Another situation could be like you want to specify a like custom backup tag. So you have ability to add a tag uh, in your uh, backup uh, uh, script. So here like same API backup start and I wanted a long term backup means uh, uh, not the, based on just the current returns and policies. That's why I've used the keep uh, uh, clause here. And then I also want to specify a tag which is monthly in my case. So this backup will be uh, created and it will have a monthly tag which will help you differentiate that like this is a uh, not a normal backup but uh, it's a long term backup for me. So you can always uh, check the progress of the backup process and for uh, doing that like you need to run backup status and then hyphen hyphen database name so for the database which you have started backup so this will show you the progress of uh, that particular backup process. If you want to list the available long term backups, uh, the command is a little uh, different here like you can use backup API then recover list uh, hyphen hyphen keep hyphen database name and uh, followed with a database name. So it is going to display you all the available uh, long term uh, backup uh, within the XRCS system. So just few examples uh, here. Uh, I'm doing a backup API list and uh, it is showing me all the available backups which is uh, there in the system. So these all tags like uh, uh, these are default tags available it is happening automatically right. So they are all incremental types here right. So I have just uh, removed like most of the lines to show uh, like how they look like uh, when you uh, use the backup API command to list the database backup. The, uh, as I said, like I created a long term backup, right? So I want to see a list of that. So I, I have used backup API recover list command uh, and uh, it is showing you uh, all the backups which are taken for uh, long term retention. So the important thing here is like uh, long term retention uh, builds uh, tell you that it, this particular backup is a, uh, not a normal backup and it will also show you the tag associated with that. So we have seen like how to uh, set the backup uh, by creating a backup configuration file and uh, various ways of like doing on-demand backups, uh, specifying keep clause for a long-term retention. Uh, now we'll uh, take a look at how we want to delete a backup, right? So to delete a backup of database deployment on Exadata database system, you can always use backup API utility. Uh, you need to again connect to the first compute node uh, using OPC user and you need to sudo to root. Uh, before deleting you might want to list the backup and uh, this is uh, this is what is going to list like all the backups within the database. So to list the uh, available backups, uh, recover list is going to uh, provide you uh, basically all the backups which you have already taken earlier. So database name is the database name for database you want to act on and once like you have all the list available you can select which backup you want to delete. So for doing that one you will be using backup underscore delete keyword here and then uh, you have ability to also provide backup because to based on the tag and the database name. So backup tag is the tag of the backup you want to delete. To delete a full backup like keep forever backups uh, you are using the backup API, backup delete, and then the tag associated, right? So it is going to delete a uh, backup, which is with keep clause uh, earlier. If you want to delete a backup in object storage, you can also do, like you can connect to rman uh, delete backup commands to delete a backup from the object storage. Okay, so uh, now, we will take a look at uh, how to update the password by backup API utility. You've seen uh, when we started, like I had to provide the uh, object storage credentials, right? And there are chances that like you will be updating it as part of maintenance or your uh, uh, 
policy within the organization right you need to change the passwords time to time so in those cases uh, you should have a way to uh, basically update the password for your backups because it is going to fail like if you have rotated the password or like uh, changed it so uh, and another uh, use case could be like uh, your backups are not happening and uh, you don't know like why my backups are not getting done on cloud storage right so this command curl uh, so uh, curl is going to provide you like if your backup configuration is having correct credentials or you are able to reach out to a storage uh, bucket so this is for oss authentication check or updating the password it will be useful uh, first thing what you can do is like you go ahead log into your uh, first compute node and issue this command so curl hyphen v hyphen x get the oss url which we seen earlier hyphen u the user id of the oss so in my case it was val.sarmatorical.com followed by colon and the password of that one so password is nothing but the auth token uh, which we created earlier so when you will run this one it should come up with uh, uh, basically uh, uh, the http response right and that response should be a valid response so that will be 200 uh, http slash 1.1 200 okay so that will confirm that like you are able to reach out to your object storage if not it will stop there and definitely you will uh, look into whether the password is changed or like if the bucket name is correct so those could be the possibility so just for verification you need to get a http uh, response 200 uh, in this case then only the backups will happen on uh, your oracle object storage bucket Another step is to verify the password is stored correctly in the wallet and uh, all the wallets are within the u uh, 01 app Oracle admin under SID you have DB wallet uh, uh, as a binary so you can invoke that one DB underscore wallet list that will show you the list of uh, uh, values you can also look for the view entry and it will show you like if they have the correct uh, credential store or not so modifying the wallet is easy like you need to create a file with just one uh, information that is password equals to the new password change mode of to 600 again right like i have given it name as bar.cfg and then you run uh, uh, the command like backup api update wallet uh, here uh, with the configuration file which you have already created right so this is password file is my new password uh, uh, configuration and the example shows the same like you are using backup api update wallet and with the new configuration file so if the password is changed in object storage uh, bucket like you are going to change it here also but you'll have to use the update wallet command so we have seen till now like how to deal with the backup configurations and uh, now we will take a look at how to restore uh, using those uh, backups which we have already taken so backup api again like it provides uh, various options so these options are like uh, uh, for recovery includes backup tag using backup tag you can do restore you can use the system change number you can do point in time recovery you can restore from the latest backup uh, and all the restore related operations will be logged under this uh, oric uh, directory so where opt oracle log then followed with db name slash oric so take a look at the example uh, here uh, I'm doing a var opt oracle backup API recover underscore start so this is the clause uh, I have to specify if I want to do a restore operation or recovery operation uh, within my XRCS environment and I'm passing the database name here so the it comes up with like uh, various options right like uh, the available options are uh, recover start to latest or to a specific SCN to a tag to uh, for a long-term retention backup like perform a full backup recovery which is with keep option right so this backup js to 2014 uh, is with a keep clause or like it also performs a recovery to the specified utc timestamp or non-utc so these are various options available and you can select uh, which recovery option you want to go with so i try to show you a, a example here so uh, for my database i have given this command backup api recover start and then uh, you are able to see 
different log associated with that, right? So process started with the PID and then like you can always uh, grip for this one and it is showing that uh, this process is running like user uh, been part OREC. This is the tool which is getting invoked uh, uh, inside and like it is doing a backup, re uh, backup restore from the latest backup, right? So here I have given the clause latest uh, for uh, my restore operation. Right, so in my case, like these were the various options available, but I went with the latest uh, backup uh, for my recovery purpose. When you will start a recovery, you can always monitor uh, that one, the recovery status using the APIs again. So backup API recover status is going to show you what's going behind the scene, right? So recover status is the uh, the key uh, keyword here or the argument you can say and uh, specify the database name and uh, this is not the complete list but uh, I have truncated the output uh, it is doing all the checks before the recovery process database was open check for p file p file were present it shut down the database uh, changing the instance to the mount mode and it is a shut down about completed here and then like it has invoked the rman right so let us back up bus uh, with this particular tag and uh, it was continuing with the database recovery so again like shut down the database completed it mounted with that one then uh, stopping the grid db so all of these steps and uh, recovery operation was completely uh, done after that one so return code zero indicates it was a successful uh, recovery from there the same command like uh, it is shown like as the exact uh, step like what it did uh, in my environment So now we look at uh, how you know your current backup configuration using backup API. So we seen like how to configure it, how to install it, how to uh, do on demand backups, how to do restore. But there are situations that like you want to modify your backup configuration, right? So you need to know what are the different values uh, which is effective in your uh, XRCS environment. So you can always use the get config uh, command here and the get config uh, info command will get the values uh, from the backup con configuration. So what you need to do is like you will be logging as OPC user sudo to root and then like uh, you are able to list the values of a backup configuration setting with uh, this get config info command. So again same API with get config info hyphen e and then the configuration and the database name for which you want to know that one. If you have more values like you can also pass a JSON file uh, for getting those configuration in place. And these configurations values could be like any configuration um, parameter which you have created or like not created but you want to see the value of it. So it could be backup CFG DBS spec or CFG files, backup CFG OS, it could be backup underscore OSS recovery window. So these are the parameters for which you want to see what value is already set before you can uh, even modify them. So few of the examples uh, for uh, knowing your current backup configuration. So using this API and uh, what I'm doing here is like uh, backup API get config underscore info. Then I'm interested in knowing what is value of uh, value of backup OSS user. So hyphen hyphen entry is for this, uh, you can just specify, specify hyphen hyphen e and then you can uh, uh, tell the which parameter value you are interested in right so i want to know what is my backup oss user right so it will run and it will return that this particular uh, value is uh, set to uh, this particular email address right similarly any any of those uh, entries you want to know like backup oss url for example right so in my case the url is uh, this one or like here i want to know like whether back what is the value of backup underscore oss so backup oss tells you like if you have a cloud backup set right so it is set to yes means i have a cloud backup enabled right uh, backup configuration files equals to yes so backup configuration file uh, value is set here so it is showing that like yeah we have this parameter set so this is one of the example like how you will know and uh, different values of your current backup configuration uh, you would be interested in knowing like all the values and we have multiple ways to uh, find that out.
So for example, knowing your current backup configuration using backup API, here you don't have to pass an entry. You just leave that uh, field blank, means with backup API, I am just passing the get config info uh, as an argument and the database name. So it will list you all the values within the uh, database uh, system, what, what is configured and effective. So for example, I have backup config file, backup daily time has set to five o'clock, backup disk is also set, and uh, my backup OSS parameters, backup user, uh, backup script location, backup type is set to disk OSS, which means like both the local backup as well as cloud backup. So this is the way uh, you can know in your environment, like what are the uh, values. Uh, another way to know your current backup configuration is using Craig, right? And uh, you can do cat, uh, via OPT or Echo Craig. Uh, with respect to each of the database, whatever database you have configured your backup for, like you should have an entry uh, .ini file uh, in this Craig directory, right? So this .ini file is nothing but it will have the uh, backup configuration related details. So you can grab for backup and it will show you all the values uh, for which is already effective for your backup configuration, right? So again, the same values, different commands or different places to know uh, is what I wanted to uh, show here. So once you know the values, like you can uh, customize the automatic backup configuration, right? And uh, for customizing it, again, you need to um, log in to your uh, Exadata compute node and uh, I, I, I will just like to log into your first node uh, as a root user. And then like you need to specify uh, backup API uh, commands like get config. It is going to anyway show you all the backup configuration. And uh, then like we would be able to also change uh, the specific values. So these are the customizable parameter for backup configuration. And this list is uh, really big. I'm not uh, getting into all of them. You can uh, read this one. Uh, in the documentation link which we shared earlier, but uh, more importantly, like backup to disk, backup configuration files, cron entry, backup OSS user password. So these are the one like you have to uh, really uh, uh, see like if they are set correctly or not. So if you want to modify any values in it, like uh, you will be using the file containing the updated backup configuration. And again, like uh, even for configuring a backup like we created a file and uh, if you want to even modify like we have to uh, go ahead and like create a new file with the new configuration and we will be again installing it so here uh, uh, you will be creating a file you will specify the file name with the path and then like that will, that will again go through the same command back, backup api set config command and uh, that new value will be effective so once you make any modification to your backup configuration, you can always check with backup API configure status, right? So backup API configure status command is going to tell you the configuration update you have done. So one thing to note here is like any change you are going to make to your uh, uh, database environment for backup related using backup API, they are not getting reflected in the Oracle database Exadata cloud service console. So at present, like uh, we are not providing any information in the console, which might change, like maybe in future, like we will have uh, backup configuration, like normal DBAS, we have all the managed backup or automatic backup configurations get, uh, in, taking in place. But for Exa Data Cloud Service, we don't have any, which might change in the future. But uh, whatever changes you will make, you won't be able to validate it uh, in the console. So if your backup configuration includes backup CFG files equals to yes, so this is an important parameter, uh, then each backup includes system and database configuration files, which is again like equally important uh, to not only data files or the database backup is important, but uh, the binaries and the configuration file. So they will go to a directory specified in oscfg.spec file and the dbcfg spec file. So both files are located under var opt oracle dbas underscore acfs slash backup and the database name where db name is the name of database that is associated with backup configuration. So, so with that, like I'll move to, uh, uh, so how these backups are getting done, like you have set the backup using those files, you installed them. Uh, 
So you would be able to see an entry in your cron tab because uh, we made an uh, parameter in our backup configuration file to have this entry as yes, right? So if, if you take a look at like under etc cron tab, uh, it will have certain entries with, with respect to your backup. And this is what is highlighted here. Like uh, I have uh, backup API backup a start for my database, right? And that backup is uh, getting done at five o'clock. This is what I said during uh, initial backup configuration. So there is a corresponding entry. Uh, for the same archive logs, like by default, it is 30 minutes. So uh, uh, every 30 minutes, it is going to do the archive logs again uh, on the same disk as well as cloud uh, backup. And like I have some more like for other databases also, I have a few backup entries. So let's get started the demo. I have logged in into my uh, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Console. Uh, before getting into uh, backup recovery aspects, I will take you through uh, the prerequisite steps. And for doing that one, I'm just uh, logging to my uh, Exadata environment. So once you are in, in your XRCS uh, environment, uh, you have to make sure uh, that like you have object storage access already configured. So I have my backup subnet here, subnet pre backup underscore ball, and I just want to make sure uh, that like this subnet is having access to object storage. So for doing that, you can uh, go to your uh, networking tab under virtual cloud network and uh, select the VCN, which you are using for your XRCS deployment. And inside that, you have to make sure you have a service gateway, which is already configured. And in my case, uh, this is my service gateway, and it has access to OCI object storage service. So this is one of the prerequisites like before you attempt to try uh, object storage backup. And if you look at the routing rules, I have a routing rule over here and they clearly say that like uh, the routing table, it can reach out to service gateway. So these things uh, we have already seen in XRCS uh, provisioning and uh, with that one, I will uh, move ahead with the next steps and try to show you uh, the how backups uh, are dealt on XRCS environment. So this is my first node of uh, Exadata Cloud Service. So basically what you will do is like you will log in as OPC user and then you have to find uh, which one is your first compute node. So for doing that, I'm logging to my grid user and then you can execute command OLS nodes hyphen N and it will exactly tell you uh, how many nodes you have in the configuration, right? And which one is designated as node one. So in my case, XD prod N53 G G1 uh, is designated as uh, node one, and uh, I am on the same node uh, over here. So let me go out of the grid user, and for uh, doing the rest of the demo, I have to log in as root user. So I am logging to my root user here. As I said, like uh, I have few databases already configured and uh, let me list it out. So I have these databases uh, available to work on. So for configuring, like uh, we discussed about few backup API commands. So let me see like if I have uh, some uh, backups which are already taken uh, using backup API. So list backup API commands, list all the backups uh, taken with the API, right? It is based on the schedule, uh, which I configured uh, originally, like once database was provision, I uh, configured the, their backup schedules. So it shows me all the backup tags, their completion dates, what kind of backups they are, like whether keep uh, is false or true. Keep equals to true is like for long-term retention, and uh, this is showing me all of the uh, backups available. So what I wanted to show you is uh, how to get started with uh, setting up a backup first, right? Uh, for doing that one, like you need to create a configuration file 
and then uh, you have to uh, make it effective by using backup API commands. So let's go into the var opt oracle ocd assistant and backup and uh, i have created a configuration file here uh, let me show you the uh, details in it so these are my entries in, uh, in the configuration file uh, i'll modify this file a bit I think things uh, are looking fine. So what options I have provided is like I want a uh, backup to object storage access. I have the credentials for my object storage here. Uh, the backup time, like when uh, the backup is going to be uh, executed. I will modify this time to so that the process will kick in and uh, I will be able to uh, track the details of that. So this looks fine. Like I will just go ahead and uh, save this file. I will just make sure the ownership of this file is given to a uh, root user. So I will make uh, change ownership to root for this file. So now uh, the ownership is changed and another thing I have to do is like change mod. Uh, this is already 600 so this will be fine. So for one of my database, which is listed here, I don't have any backup configuration done. This is the XRDB uh, uh, on this system. So let's check, like I want to execute the backup configuration for uh, this database. So I will be using a set command, backup API set config command. Backup Oracle backup underscore api and i have backup underscore api inside this uh, then set config file equals to and the path of the file so in my case like it is uh, under this directory i'm just uh, specifying the path of that file iphone iphone db name and uh, xrdb so let's see so uh, now i have tried to set the backup configuration i can take a look at uh, the log to make sure the backup configurations are getting done as i want it so uh, from the log you can see that uh, backup configuration is going to take place it should return and uh, it should say that uh, the configuration was successful and later I will verify uh, if uh, backup configurations are already done. So right now it is trying to register it uh, into the database. I will open up another window uh, to show you a few more commands meanwhile. I'm, I'm going to show you like uh, backup related commands uh, over here. So the first command I'm going to take a look at after doing the setting up the configuration, uh, that should be, uh, you should be able to list out all the backups. And backup API list command is exactly doing that. It is uh, showing you all the backups which are already taken. If you have taken a long-term uh, retention backup, so you'll be able to list that out here using uh, backup API recover underscore list. So you see that like I have a, a backup which is uh, falling under long-term retention that is tagged as monthly 2019-04. So whatever tag you provide like while taking the uh, a long term retention backup it will uh, reflect here in the backup window so let's uh, start a backup for the database so i'm going to give uh, uh, this particular backup a name uh, so that it will be easy for me to uh, track
for specifying the tag you can uh, use tag equals to and then uh, test backup and I hit enter so this is a, an example of on-demand backup right it is going to take some time and uh, then the backups will be taken and uh, we'll again use commands to validate that meanwhile like I wanted to show you uh, since backup configurations are done like some certain times like you need to validate if your object storage credentials are correct or uh, if that is working I'm opening a, another window and uh, here I will execute that command so meanwhile my uh, screen is back so let me uh, go back on the same so you can track the backup uh, related details from here the log file it will show you the progress of that backup and it is showing that like uh, registering the request and uh, starting the backup and it will uh, this is the command uh, executed for uh, taking out that so how you are going to validate if uh, backup configurations are correct right so for uh, doing that one you need to uh, use the curl command this might be useful sometime especially for troubleshooting the backup related issues so with curl hyphen v hyphen x get i have provided my url here uh, with the bucket information then the credential and the uh, auth token so you should be able to get uh, something http status uh, 200 uh, which we discussed earlier so let's take a look at in the beginning So if you notice here HTTP status 200 OK means it is able to validate my credentials are good. Uh, it has found the object storage uh, bucket with uh, user balsarmaoracle.com. So uh, I was able to validate to that. So my cloud backup should be working fine. So if you have any issue, it, this response is going to be 400 here. So that will indicate that uh, you have to look into either or token or like uh, in the uh, a suit URL like which you are providing so there could be anything wrong or the password could be wrong so that you will have to correct so since you have executed a backup uh, we can always uh, check the status of that uh, backup which are getting done and again like you would be able to use uh, command uh, backup underscore status and it should show you like what's going on so it is saying that like there is a new process this process can be again tracked with os processes and uh, a starting device backup process uh, so that is still not completed but uh, the backup job is started and it is uh, doing its uh, backup to the destination which we have specified few of the commands like verifying the backup configurations um, so you can use again the check config command and uh, that should uh, uh, return you sorry I think like I had a mistake here you can specify hyphen hyphen database name and it will tell you that uh, backup configuration how it looks like whether it's uh, OSS backup or like local backup also or both So here it confirms that this particular backup is like this plus uh, uh, object storage both. Another thing I wanted to show you like how you restore right since one backup is already going but uh, before restoring you definitely want to uh, uh, list like what backup you have. So for doing that I will be using uh, recover underscore start and then uh, uh, the command like latest latest is like uh, the latest backup I want to uh, use for my restore purpose so if I leave this tag like I first just want to uh, list this out uh, you can use the recover status command uh, which will show you 
the recovery status like if if you are doing already recovery uh, with a specific tag or something like you would be able to check that one so this is showing me the last uh, recovery status on my database for doing a restore you can use recover underscore status then uh, the tag with which you want to uh, restore your database then the database name so uh, i'm not going to enter this command since one backup is already going uh, but uh, when i hit this like it will start the recovery from uh, the backup tag which is designated as latest in my environment so i hope like uh, you find this uh, uh, topic useful and uh, we will try to summarize it here So what we have seen here is like uh, uh, how to uh, configure the backups on XRCS uh, to know like you should have an understanding on uh, what are different methods of doing it, like what are the APIs provided or the tooling available from Oracle. Uh, you, you have seen like how I can uh, verify the current backup configuration, uh, also the way like we can customize it and uh, the method to take backups or listing it or uh, doing a restore uh, from available backups so hope uh, you find it uh, useful and uh, uh, i will uh, see you in another class on xrcs that will be around uh, patching as well as manageability uh, using oem cloud control and uh, apis and clis that would be another interesting topic for you uh, if you want to learn more thank you so much and have a good day